Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Andrew Kirchhoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be conducting a live mock draft here on the channel for a 12 team half PPR scoring format league. Now before we get into the live mock draft that we'll conduct in a little bit, I wanted to go ahead and warm up here on fantasypros.com with their draft simulator and give you guys my thought process on my personal approach going into the 2020 season. Now I know a lot of people in the comment section continue to ask, Andrew, why are you drafting two running backs by at least the first three rounds? Why do you continue to go after early tight ends? Why do you always continue to go for these lower end wide receiver twos with upside and why is it that you're always going for one of the top five six quarterbacks on your board all of that in my opinion has been broken down at a statistical point and a scientific point now i'm not a complete scientist but all of this offseason i've pretty much spent my efforts breaking down drafts in a mathematical formula to kind of give myself the best advantage going into my 2020 fantasy football drafts and kind of having the stats on my side at all times so I can make the right decisions throughout the entirety of my draft. Now, sure, there are going to be players that mathematically don't make sense in specific positions in where you draft them. But overall, there's always going to be guys that exceed the expectations or under, you know, produce on a yearly basis or guys that you might just you might have a hunch on and eventually they end up popping off due to the opportunity that they are granted but either way i wanted to go ahead and share a little bit of that mathematical approach that i always continue to uh you know preach and go with and something that you guys can find in my 2020 fantasy football draft guide but either way i wanted to go ahead and let's talk about um you know my approach to starting with two running backs because i think today is a good idea to start talking about how we can potentially draft two running backs a top three tight end, two of the top 24 wide receivers that definitely have wide receiver one upside and a top five quarterback all within the first six or seven rounds of your draft and potentially build yourself a roster that cannot be stopped going into 2020. Now, I think many of you have seen this before. I went ahead and I talked about this statistical breakdown during my zero wide or sorry, my zero RB strategy uh, where you heavily target wide receivers. And this is an argument that I've been making a little bit uh, this offseason that you can find definitely in my 2020 fantasy football draft guide. I mean, it's not a huge portion of it, but this is definitely something you want to keep your eye out on. In terms of the productivity of the wide receiver position in comparison to the running back position, why does Andrew always draft two running backs very early? If many of you haven't seen this, in a half PPR scoring format, this is a pretty staggering statistic. On the very left, top left, we see half PPR running backs versus wide receivers in 2019. An average RB1, which is a top 12 running back from last season, produced 260.92 fantasy points total, while an average wide receiver one last season in half PPR scored 221.04 fantasy points for the entire 16 game season. Now the difference between the two positions was about a 15% drop off or it could be correlated to a almost 40 point drop off in productivity from an RB1 in comparison to a wide receiver one. Now obviously there's a reason why eight running backs are typically coming off the board in the first round of draft and that's mainly due to the fact that the running back position has far more capabilities in terms of opportunity, potential upside of touchdowns, and total yardage and in the fact that you're playing in a point per reception format you can definitely close the gap and make it a even bigger uh, gap at times now when we talk about the rb2 position in comparison to wide receiver twos this is where the decision is made in my mind when you look at the average uh, running back that ranked from 13 to 24 last season he put up on average 180.26 fantasy points in comparison to the uh, the wide receivers that produced from 13 to 24 put up 185.42 so the wide receiver twos far and away on average were better than the running back twos last season almost a 2.86 in, uh, percent you know incline of production and almost 5.16 total fantasy points now the real thing is andrew the running back drop off is pretty significant. As you can see in the top right, there is nearly an 80 point drop off in comparison to an average RB1 and an RB2. That in itself scares me and wants me, I mean, that makes me avoid guys like Todd Gurley or David Johnson or Le'Veon Bell. Even though I think they always will have the upside of producing into the top 12, the guys that are in the top 12 right now have proven their solid, uh, you know, they've solidified themselves within the top 12 of the position for a reason whether it's opportunity based whether it's skill based whether it's uh you know the, the fact that they're a monster in the passing game there are always different factors and variables but 
I always want to get at least two top 12 running backs for a reason. And that's one of the reasons on screen. Now, looking at the wide receiver position, the drop off from a wide receiver one to a wide receiver two is not nearly as significant. And that's why I'm always comfortable drafting a wide receiver two with upside. I always talk about guys like Robert Woods for a reason, because a guy like that or Tyler Lockett, they are significantly undervalued for where they're going and what they produce on a yearly basis. And if they have the upside, catch a couple extra touchdowns, get in a couple extra passes in their direction because of wide receivers out or traded like Brandon Cooks uh, in the in the Rams offense, there is always potential for an incline in production. So that should just give you like an overall perspective of how I'm approaching my drafts. Why I'm always targeting two RBs within my first three rounds, because again, the drop off production at the running back position is pretty significant. And again, um, this information that I just divulged can easily be found in my 2020 fantasy football draft guide. I know I mention it all the time, but I'm telling you guys, I spent a lot of this offseason breaking down drafts to a science and, you know, testing hypotheses. I always wanted to, I mean, I've never been a science guy. I've never been a math guy, but for some reason, the analytics and the statistics of fantasy football has somehow been an interest of mine. And I've broken it down to a science as to why you would rather take a guy um, in the top 12 scenario of the running back position in comparison to guys that are lower than them, where you want to draft your wide receivers, why you would want to potentially go for a top five tight end in comparison to everybody else, where you want to draft your quarterbacks and what are the qualities of a quarterback that are also valuable in fantasy football. I cover so much information. You go down to the description of the video. Um, there's my, uh, Patreon over there. Andrew Kirikoff, uh, com is down there. The dot com basically is where you can find my draft guide if you don't want to sign up for Patreon. Patreon, you go to the website, watch the video. I promise you, I divulge all the information that is going to be inside the draft guide. It is, I mean, I'm telling you, a bang for its buck. Uh, I promise you, I've, I've spent a lot of time. So anyway, for those of you who are interested, you could definitely take advantage of that. Outside of that, let's go ahead and draft. Again, like I was mentioning, why does Andrew draft two running backs in the first three rounds? Why does he go for early tight ends? And why does he go for two of the mid-tier wide receivers and then try to lock down a top five quarterback? Let's try this strategy because I do think it could very much so find success in fantasy football. As we see on screen, I'm currently drafting from the number three overall spot. Uh, again, this is a little bit of a warm up before we get to the uh, live mock draft. For those of you who are just wanting to get to the live mock draft, go for it. It's down in the description. Timestamps are down there. All right, so either way, we're drafting at the number three spot mainly because we want a top three uh, tight end. And to get a top three tight end, or specifically a top two tight end, you gotta draft him in the second round as it currently stands. Uh, so in that case, I'm gonna need to sit around this range because if I want Travis Kelsey, I'm probably gonna need the seventh pick, maybe this, this, the eighth pick uh, of the first round to, to in order to get him in the second round. But regardless, let's go ahead and see how this goes. Uh, the available players, I mean, I'm taking Zeke over just about anybody here. Um, Obviously, if the other two that were drafted ahead of me uh, were selected, then, you know, it'd be a different conversation. But as it currently stands, uh, the quarterback position, I mean, this has got to stop. But regardless, tight ends taken, running backs come off the board uh, at a premium, to be honest. Uh, we still have decent running backs. Again, I want to get top 12 guys. I want two of these guys. Even though I think these guys are probably at the lower end, I still think they have the significant opportunity to maybe make the top 12 if in fact you know somebody gets injured we, we're always seeing guys get injured nick chubb concussion at practice yesterday uh miles sanders has a lower body injury is week to week quote unquote there is going to be injuries that take place you've always got to be able to adapt have handcuffs on roster regardless we want to go ahead and we wanted to draft the tight end because i do think george kittle top 12 guy uh or top two at the position certainly and on top of it averaged just the exact same amount of points as travis kelsey last season he just played three less games so george kittle was on pace to uh definitely being the number one last season all right so now that we grab george kittle there is still opportunity at running back um aaron jones is gone jonathan but you know what austin eckler is still available for us uh Jonathan Taylor, he runs a couple people over <laughs> in training camp. You got himself as a second round pick immediately. Regardless, now that we've gotten into the fourth round, again, the thought process is instead of going for a running back here, you go ahead and you take these high upside wide receivers. I love myself a Calvin Ridley. That seems like a fantastic idea right now, has high upside. So we'll go ahead and grab him and let this draft come back to us. And in turn, maybe you go ahead and draft another wide receiver, which it's looking like there's got some great opportunity. Your Chark, uh, Metcalf, and Parker, three guys that I'm extremely high on this upcoming season and guys that I love to have on my roster as it currently stands. So at this current juncture, I mean, it really doesn't matter. I'm just, Chark's my guy. I'm going to continue to ride him out uh, and continue to draft him. I love these second-year wide receivers. 
Now we get into the sixth round. Is this time to where I draft my quarterback? There's always a potential. Look, here's the thing. Again, you're always having to be reactionary in your drafts. And the fact of the matter is the top five quarterbacks easily came off the board because of the fact that there was a little bit of a push in the beginning rounds, which allowed me to get George Kittle certainly. But again, uh, I struggled to find myself a quarterback who I probably would have wanted to find Kyler Murray in the sixth, uh, but unfortunately wasn't able to find maybe even a Deshaun Watson I would have been happy with. But regardless, um, we can go ahead and we can just build the rest of this roster as it currently stands. You don't really have to uh, risk too much here. I'd love to get a running back, and that's what I'm going to do. I'll take DeAndre Swift here. Again, we will eventually get a quarterback. Uh, we weren't able to get one super early, but then we're going to go ahead to the wide receiver position and draft guys that we absolutely love. Uh, a guy like Marvin Jones, I'm really high on this season. Uh, one of my guys that I always have to, <laughs> I always seem to find them on my roster uh, one way or another. Okay, now that we've gotten into this conversation of where the quarterback position is up on the board, again, I still like Drew Brees more than just about um, any of these guys that are available on the board. My boy Jamison Crowder is gone, not really worried about it. We could take a Drew Brees here and pretty much lock down this draft, okay? Sure, the quarterback position was taken in the eighth round in comparison to somewhere earlier where I easily could have got him in the sixth if, in fact, it had fallen to me. But I'm pretty happy going with two of the top 12 running backs, a top two overall tight end who could potentially finish as the number one tight end this upcoming season. Again, the 49ers are dealing with a lot of injuries. There's going to be a lot more targets for George Kittle. I know they brought in Jordan Reed, but Jordan Reed has been an injury monster his entire career, unfortunately. Missed the entirety of the 2019 season. I know I'm talking fast, but I'm trying to get to the live mock draft. Regardless, Ridley, Chark, Marvin Jones as my top three guys. I have the upside of DeAndre Swift, and I still can definitely draft a running back here and get another flex guy. I don't mind going Jordan Howard here because I do believe he's eventually, I mean, going to, he's going to have to score there. I mean, the Dolphins are going to be a significantly better offense in the second half of the season. They were a, you know, a pretty good team. They were winning games. They beat the Patriots in week 17. This team wasn't a joke. It's probably going to be Ryan Fitzpatrick at the starting quarterback position, which probably gives them the best chance right out the gate. And they're going to have to rely upon the run, certainly. But either way, this is a quick draft. I wanted to go ahead. Let's go ahead and move on. And let's let's draft at a different spot. I think you can definitely conduct this strategy at the number 12 spot. Find success pretty easily. Available players on board. Uh, Marvin Jones. But again, here's the thing. If you want to draft two of the top 12 tight, uh, running backs, excuse me, you have to take them in the first two rounds if you sit right here. At the number 12 spot, it is not going to come back to you and because you know the top 12 running backs are gone by the end of the second round. So I'll take Clyde Edwards here. Uh, with Miles Sanders injured and Nick Chubb injured and Kenny Drake on the thumbnail, we're going to go ahead and take Kenny Drake here. No problem. We're just you know flowing with it. The, the whole point is that you're going for two of the top um, 12 running backs. And then on top of it, you want to go ahead and get a top three at least tight end. Now, obviously, the top two tight ends are gone. So what does that leave me with? That leaves me with the potential of Mark Andrews. And I don't mind taking Mark Andrews in a third or fourth round capacity in a 12 point or a half point PPR scoring format. So we'll take Mark Andrews here and then we'll go ahead and we'll sit here and go. Yeah, uh, there it is. One of my favorite wide receivers going into this upcoming season, uh, Robert Woods. So we take Robert Woods, Cooper Cup's come right off the, the board uh, flanking him. And then we got to, again, we have to address wide receiver here because I needed two of those top 24 guys. And then potentially we go for a top five quarterback, potentially maybe even Dak. So as it currently stands, looking at the board, I really do like Tyler Boyd to an extent. I keep, I'm a little wish-washy on Tyler Boyd. For some reason, there are some days out of the week where uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to say the hate word, but I'm not as high on him. And then there's other times where I'm like, man, Tyler Boyd really could be a monster this year. And I'm just going to hope for upside. If A.J. Green is going to be drafted ahead of Tyler Boyd, I'm happy to get him in the end of the fifth, pretty much early sixth round. Now, speaking of the early sixth round, I'm going to go and draft my quarterback. Because again, like I was mentioning, I want to lock down everything that I want to lock down. Just like last round, I witnessed the quarterback position come off the board heavily in the seventh or sixth and seventh round. I got to get ahead of it. I did so drafting Dak Prescott here. Now, breaking it down, there are definitely still running backs available that I'd like to have on roster, but I don't have to go ahead and take a running back at this point, I probably should. Um, and that's probably what I'll do. I love Jamison Crowder. I like Deontay Johnson, but Jamison Crowder is my guy uh, this upcoming season. Monster on the team. Could have finished as a top 24 guys if Matt, uh, sorry, if Sam Darnold had stayed healthy for the entirety of the season. Let's not forget how many targets Jamison Crowder gets per game on top of the fact that there's no more Quincy Inunua or Robbie Anderson in that offense. And, I mean, when we remember Adam Gase, what do we remember Adam Gase for? 
feeding Jarvis Landry the ball in Miami and feeding Emmanuel Sanders the ball in Denver. Sounds good to me. Moving on. Um, in terms of the running back position, you could take a guy like the, uh, you know, J.K. Dobbins here, have the little bit of the upside. I'm hoping for upside. He's going to sit at my flex position, but we're still going to get a decent amount of value at the flex position here from wide receivers and or uh, running backs. But just to kind of give you the breakdown, that's another one of these teams that I could build uh, really quickly off of the back of two running backs, a tight end in the early going, two wide receivers and a quarterback, and then you start filling in necessity and filling in a flex position. I understand the idea of going triple running back, uh, and it could definitely be done, and it could definitely find some success, but you're going to take some discounts elsewhere, um, which will definitely could hurt you in the wrong, long run. But again, um, every draft is different. You could end up falling uh, into a position where you're getting great picks at every single uh, you know round because the players that are flanking you are just making rookie mistakes. But either way, now that we've kind of conducted a pick at the number three overall position and number 12 overall position, of our draft we're going to move on and we're going to get into our live mock draft on today's video uh thank you for holding on and let's go ahead and next time you see me we will be live mock drafting here we go all right we're almost on the clock to begin with our first round selection seeing who's come off the board already uh you know the the usual suspects are flying off the board only two wide receivers have come off the board so, thus far uh, and my pick is almost about to be here. I'm going to, again, lock down two of the top 12 running backs at the 12th pick. Unfortunately, I tried to get an earlier pick, but there wasn't many mock drafts in which uh, those early round uh, picks were available. Regardless, we are on the clock officially. Kenny Drake just getting taken off the board. As it currently stands, again, we are looking for running backs, uh, guys that I have you know the utmost confidence in. I uh, have no problem drafting you know, Josh Jacobs here. And with the current talent that's on the board, I could definitely go for a high upside wide receiver. But again, we're trying to do this two running back, one tight end, and then two mid-tier wide receivers uh, strategy. So at this point, we're going to go with the fact that Miles Sanders is probably not going to be, I mean, lower leg injury. I mean, let's just hope that he's healthy by the time the regular season is around. Not really worried about the injuries that are taking place right now obviously there's been a lot of injuries that have taken place uh, already in training camp but that's every year it's not really too much of a surprise that people are going to go down with you know torn pecs or quads or acls those are always a part of the sport as soon as people get in the pads and start hitting people are going to get injured so either way when we get to our second and third round picks or sorry our, our third and fourth round picks uh, i'll update you so until then be right back all right, we're back. Our third and fourth round picks are just about to be made. I'm waiting for the selection right ahead of me. As we can see on screen, at the end of the second round, we had George Kittle and Travis Kelsey come off the board. In the mid, middle of the, the third round, I was getting a little excited waiting. I was thinking maybe Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes could fall to me in the third slash fourth round. I would definitely be you know, very happy to invest in that. But either way, at this moment in time, let's go look at the available players. We are looking for a top tight end. Uh, Mark Andrews is still on the board, but we're also looking for top talent at the wide receiver position. DJ Moore is still on the board, which I'm really excited about looking at running backs. Uh, nothing too exciting there. I mean, obviously, Leonard Fournette would be a great group, uh, pickup and, and play. But overall, I'm really excited about taking DJ Moore at the end of the third round and then starting the fourth round by grabbing my tight end one, Mark Andrews. So we'll go ahead and we'll see how the rest of the draft progresses. But as it currently stands, again, I'm still looking to grab another one of these wide receivers. Fill in my flex position and grab my quarterback position in the next three rounds uh, and hopefully find some success in doing so. And hopefully we get some talent to drop to us that typically wouldn't. But either way, uh, we'll update you when we're getting into the fifth and sixth round picks. Here we go. All right, we're just a couple picks away from our next selections for the fifth and sixth round. Again, we're looking for the wide receiver position and potentially a quarterback here or fill in the flag spot. Again, the wide receivers are coming off the board. A little bit of a, you know, a quarterback run at the end of the fifth round. This is probably where I was going to draft a quarterback anyway, top of the sixth. But anyway, looking at the available wide receivers and running backs. Uh, of the available running backs, I still could wait and grab talent a little bit later in the draft from Lindsey or Dobbins or James White, who I think I can get in seventh. But in terms of the wide receiver position, we still have a lot of talent here. The likes of Keenan Allen, uh, Tyler Boyd, great players overall. We'll take Keenan Allen here as our wide receiver too. And then we'll go ahead and we'll look upon the quarterback position and invest in a guy like Kyler Murray in the sixth round. So that going into the seventh, all we have to focus on is wide receiver running back in a constant back and forth motion. Wide receiver running back, wide receiver running back. Until we've pretty much locked down the depth of our lineup. Again, 
considering I've taken a guy like Mark Andrews and Kyler Murray, I won't have to address the quarterback and tight end positions for the rest of my draft until perhaps the last couple rounds. And even then, I'd more likely, more or less likely not draft a quarterback or a tight end. The only reason I draft a, a tight end at the end of this uh, draft would be if I'm looking for a guy that wants to potentially have upside, if I can get a Noah Fant or a Hawkinson super late 14th round, I'm willing to take that investment because not only are they capable of being a top 12 guy, I can eventually trade them during the season uh, and potentially get an upgrade in my starting lineup. Uh, but in terms of Kyler, I have to worry about a week, eight bye week. I mean, that's pretty far away. I can definitely already prepare for that by week six or seven by finding a quarterback that I like the matchup in in week eight and not have to worry. But either way, uh, we're a couple picks away definitely from our next selection. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward to them. All right, we're almost back on the clock. couple more selections until I'm up for my what seventh and eighth round selections as of right now we're looking for flex and depth talent overall there's still a lot of talent left on the board i mean just looking at the running back position like i mentioned the guys that i expected to still be here are here i'm going to take the uh jump on jk dobbins again i've been hearing a couple rumors here and there i'm not sure if it's going to come true as of this moment in time but that the jacksonville jaguars are going to be trading yannick and Gakwe. Uh, over to the Baltimore Ravens for Gus Edwards. If something of that takes place, I don't know. I feel like the offseason is getting to me and that J.K. Dobbins is going to be a monster this year for that Ravens team, despite how much I like Mark Ingram. I think they can both be top, you know, efficient backs just because of how good that running attack is overall for the Ravens. Also, on top of that, we go over to the wide receiver position, seeing guys that I really like. Um, again, we have some talent that is still pretty good on the board. Um, honestly, at this point, I'm just going to go with Marvin Jones. Actually, you know what? We'll take a Jamison Crowder. I'm not taking the risk. Uh, Jamison Crowder, in my opinion, in terms of all the wide receivers that are still sitting there, maybe Debo Samuel's a guy that I'm going to come back and grab. Um, but I have the most confidence in Jamison Crowder in comparison to the rest of that field. Um, with AJ Green injury history, Will Fuller injury history, uh, Julian Edelman, I don't know who the starting quarterback is there. Uh, officially Deontay Johnson who's I mean is he going to be the number two for that team or is it going to be James Washington and or Eric Ebron Marvin Jones injury history Mar you know Brandon Cooks uh, that's more of a can he mesh with the offense I think he will I think he'll be great uh, Manuel and then when we get to the Manuel Sanders and these kind of guys um, they also I mean everybody has injury history that's what it kind of seems like but regardless we went ahead we locked down a flex we locked down another wide receiver and as the draft continues, as we update more and more, we're going to continue to grab running backs and wide receivers in tandems until we pretty much establish ourselves with a lot of depth. Uh, again, you can never have too many running backs. And in terms of a league in which you're starting three wide receivers, you want to make sure that you have guys that you can switch on a weekly basis. Again, the three guys that I have on this team, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Jameis Crowder, I'm extremely uh, excited about I mean I could have taken Amari Cooper as my second wide receiver and skipped out on a Mark Andrews but let's go and look really quickly while we're still here waiting um, if I had skipped out on Mark Andrews in the beginning of the fourth and I went with an Amari Cooper or a Cooper Cup something of that nature um, you know Zach Ertz goes in the fourth Mark Andrews probably goes in the fourth or fifth and going into the fifth round um, what ends up happening here is there another tight end taken when do I get you know Darren Waller is probably still available. Hunter Henry, yeah, Tyler Higbee's. I could have dealt with that, but at this point, I'm confident with the tight end that I drafted. Uh, he has so much more upside and potential than the rest of his group. So, you know, you never know. Either way, he's the number one wide receiver of the Baltimore Ravens offense. I'm excited about it. Moving on, we will update you on our next selection. Here we go. All right, we're one selection away from our next pick. Uh, as it currently stands, there's still a lot of talent left on the board at the running back and wide receiver positions. Uh, looking at what is available at the top of the board. James White is still sitting here at the running back position, seeing what came off the board there. No problem. Uh, of the talent that's still sitting here at running back, I am very confident in the potential of a James White being a guy that can easily be a 10-point-per-week flex play with the upside of a touchdown and ending up being a great performer for that offense. Sony Michelle being injured also does contribute to his potential upside of his value. We'll take James White here, and then we'll go ahead and in tandem grab a wide receiver uh, that is, again, still talented on the board. Uh, we have Marvin Jones. I mean, it just seems like an easy fit. Um, we'll continue to update you as the draft progresses. All right, we're back, and as it currently stands, there's a couple players that I've kept in my queue because I'm definitely looking to go ahead and once again draft a running back and a wide receiver the available guys that are somehow 
still available in this draft going into this round. Uh, I'm extremely excited about it. I've gone ahead and I've queued up Debo Samuel and Zach Moss. And I understand that Debo Samuel might not come back for the first month of the season. But once he's back, he will be the leading wide receiver of that 49ers offense, which I'm really excited about. In terms of the running back position of the available talent, excuse me, let's go ahead and get there. Uh, again, Latavius Murray, Duke Johnson, these guys aren't going to win their starting jobs. But we have starters like Adrian Peterson and potentially Zach Moss, who could vie for some early down work in the running game and be a goal line back for this Bills team. Let's go for the upside. Let's hope for the best. And let's go ahead and draft Zach Moss. Now that we've kind of established our team, again, we have a couple more bench slots available. One exactly. But you can go ahead and you can fill running backs in at the, tie, at the kicker and defensive spots. I mean, you can technically roster 15 players in this draft. If it was me, if I'm going to finish out this draft, I'm going to sit here and instead of drafting a kicker and a defense, I'm going to go for Boston Scott because of Miles Sanders' questionable uh, you know, injury. I'll go for Justin Jackson because, again, there are some rumors that he's getting a couple first-team reps with that offense. If he can end up being the Melvin Gordon of this offense, he could be an extremely deadly fantasy option going into the 2020 season, uh, especially considering he is a potential back that can catch the ball out of the backfield and that Joshua Kelly is getting only second team reps. So that's another guy that I'd like to go ahead and grab instead of a, a potential defense or kicker. Outside of that, you could always go ahead and take risks on a Damian Harris. Uh, if I don't not already grab James White, that could potentially invest in that backfield even more. Keyshawn Vaughn, not a bad idea, but Rojo's not been playing bad at camp. In terms of the wide receiver position, there are always going to be young wide receivers that can go ahead and produce. But again, during my 2020 Fantasy Football Draft Guide, you can find all my information regarding rookies and the value of and how many rookies you typically want to invest in and what is the likelihood of that rookie potentially having a breakout season in comparison to the past decade of rookies and their consistencies. Again, the wide receiver position last season was the best it's been since 2014. Uh, and, you know, as great as this draft class was in 2020 for the wide receiver position, are they capable of keeping pace with the guys like Terry McLaurin and A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf and D.J. Chark and what they did last season? But regardless, that's pretty much it. I mean, again, the next pick will come up and I will probably draft sleeper running backs that I think could have good upside if, in fact, an injury takes place this offseason. But outside of that, I'm pretty satisfied with the overall roster that I've constructed thus far today. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Is the roster too wide receiver heavy on this bench? To be honest, this is so much talent. I'm going to be <laughs> probably fielding a lot of trades going to the 2020 season with this kind of a roster. But regardless, thank you everybody for watching. Let me know down below in the comment section what you think. And until next time, thank you very much. Subscribe to the channel. Tell a friend. And uh, let's try to get to 13,000 subscribers. I'll see you guys. Peace.